Kicking things off with tip numero uno, we have the Jeepers Leapers. Acrid's default utility skill, the Caustic Leap, sends Acrid hurtling through the air and coming down with a slam that stuns enemies, deals 320% damage, and leaves behind a Caustic Pool that deals either poison or blight damage depending on which you select. His alternate utility skill, the Frenzied Leap, functions similarly but with the main difference being that it doesn't poison enemies but instead deals 550% damage and has the added bonus of a cooldown reduction of 2 seconds for every enemy hit. Keep in mind that both of these skills also have a base of two charges, so the perk of playing as the Dino Dog, other than being the Dino Dog, is that you start with a free half hard light afterburner. While dropping some Dragon Ball Z double fist slamma jamma action on some alien jabronis domes is the bread and butter of this technique, it also doubles and provides Acrid with some fantastic vertical and horizontal mobility baked into his kit. Although the physics of this jump can be a little bit wonky, by practicing with the leaps, you can use this in conjunction with his sprint to send yourself hurtling across the map in order to cover distances quickly, make your way up to ledges and platforms to zoot up and dip out of scary encounters faster than Scooby and the gang after letting out a <gasps> rut row. To truly unmask the true potential of this ability, you should know that the most busted part of all is that when using this move, Acrid becomes immune to fall damage. And when I say no matter the height, I mean truly any height. I'm talking some Ezio Alditore, Assassin's Creed 2, diving into hay bales from 300 feet up swan dive type of defying physics. With this lizard brain leap of faith, you can even launch yourself entirely off the map deep into the abyss and see absolutely zilcho repercussions and because of this you should most definitely be using this bad boy to your advantage more so than the mystery machine gang using scooby snacks to willingly get shaggy and scooby to commit osha violations that would have upton sinclair whipping out his notepad Regardless of which leap you wind up going with, make sure to keep your eyes peeled for the Paul's Goat Hoof and the Mocha Joka, which increase your movement speed and help Acrid travel even further with these leaping techniques. Moving on to tip numero dos, we have the Teen Choice Awards, aka they'll slime you and everything. By far and away, the most broken ability in all of Acrid's kit has to be his poison. This is because poison damage infects an enemy and deals a percentage of their maximum health per second as tick damage. Poison ticks three times per second for 10 seconds, plus one extra tick when it expires, and deals 1% of the victim's maximum health per second or 100% base damage, whatever is greater. Because of this infinite scaling, Acrid's poison has the highest potential damage output in the game, and the longer your run goes on, the more more crack this ability becomes. The main downside to poison is that the tick damage cannot actually kill enemies, so you'll wind up leaving more monsters at 1 HP than my level 100 skeptile rock and fall swipe as I tried to complete the Hoenn Pokédex back in 2003. And although needing another instance of damage to finish off these enemies can be quite the annoyance, especially in earlier stages, as your run progresses and hopefully you come across some solid proc chaining items such as the Will of the Wisp, Ukulele, or Ceremonial Daggers, any of those forgotten 1 HP enemies are going to get erased from existence faster than some Toys R Us lightsaber scuff marks on the family room wall after a post bedtime recreation of the 2v1 goaded Duel of the Fates showdown on Naboo. I can't even begin to tell you how many times my boy Mr. Clean came in with the clutch performance for me and my brothers. Muchos gracias. On the other hand, we have Blight, which is the alternative to Poison, which instead functions by ticking three times per second for five seconds, plus one extra tick when it expires, and deals 20% base damage per tick. 
for 60% damage per second. Unlike Poison, Blight is stackable and each stack of Blight increases the damage of the tick rather than adding more ticks. And although Blight seems like it could possibly be better than Poison due to its stackability, in practice it is really difficult to build stacks due to the cooldowns of Acrid's abilities in combination with the main fact that unlike Bleed, setting a new stack of Blight does not reset the Blight cooldown. So you only have 5 seconds to get as many stacks as possible, which just isn't that good. The aggressive playstyle needed for Blight is definitely more enjoyable and it is better in the first couple of stages, however it just gets quickly outpaced and completely outdone by the percent health scaling of poison in later rounds. Tip numero trace is the shiny teeth in me. Acrid's default ability, the Vicious Wounds, has the Dino Dog himself swiping at his enemies with a 3 hit combo that deals 200% damage on the first 2 hits and then on the 3rd hit 400% damage which also has the added benefit of healing him for 5% of his maximum health. This allows Schmackrid to get up close and personal with those alien bozos and settle things the old fashioned way, mano e mano. If you want to rock the full Schmacko shiny teeth in me build though and really get in there and stand on business, then make sure to unlock and equip Acrid's alternate secondary ability, the Ravenous Bite. Although this is undoubtedly not as good as the default secondary, which allows you to poison enemies from range, and as I mentioned earlier, the poison is straight cracked, it is a lot of fun, especially when you're rocking the bite and blight combo. This move, the Ravenous Bite, deals 320% damage and applies either poison or blight and once again heals Acrid once his chompers find their way into his enemies. It should also be noted that the bite deals more damage the lower the enemy's health is at, which makes it particularly good for landing that final blow. And although Neurotoxin, the default secondary, is undoubtedly a much better and useful move since it provides a ranged addition to Acrid's kit where you can safely inflict poison or blight from a distance and also take care of those annoying flying enemies as well. The bite definitely wins out in the fun factor as well as the sound design department because it makes such a satisfying crunch. And although it's tough to argue that the Ravenous Bite can ever be as effective as Neurotoxin, by picking up the Backup Mag which increases the number of charges for your secondary ability, as well as the Rejuve Rack which doubles all of your healing, at least you will be making more green utilizing your shiny teeth than Chip Skylark in his sold out tour at the Dimsdale Demodome. Tip numero quattro is the Poison Stunning Run. We already mentioned Acrid's utility skills, the Caustic and Frenzy Leap, and their usefulness as a mobility skill for navigating around the environment quickly and safely. Frenzied Leap is definitely a better move for dealing raw damage since it does 520% as opposed to Caustic Leap's 320% and has the additional benefit of being able to proc the bands reliably which can be done by his third hit combo of Vicious Wounds but you have to get a lot closer and it takes longer to pull off. Regardless of which you choose though, the Focus Crystal is a must have as it immediately increases the damage done to up close enemies and since this is a melee attack you're getting that bonus every time. Mobility wise they are both about equal since even though Frenzied Leap has a longer 10 second cooldown as opposed to Caustic's 6 second it is reduced by 2 seconds for every enemy hit making it much more useful for longer runs or looping as more and more enemies spawn in. However, despite the advantages of Frenzied Leap, it is inherently a more risky playstyle and simply not as effective as rocking the Caustic Leap, jumping into the thick of it, stunning those bad hombres and leaving behind a poison pool and then following that up with the old secret Joe Star technique. Since the duration of poison tick damage lasts for 10 seconds and the cooldown for Caustic Leap is 6, you can constantly be spamming this ability, 
zipping out of there with your second charge of the leap. And then right as the poison is about to expire, you can hop back into the fray and make sure to reapply some of that schmackrid poison factor 50 to those alien bozos. The only ultraviolet those dweebs better be watching out for is the skin tone of Barney's busted cousin. Unless, of course, you are a total monsooner already and are rocking the albino dino. And finishing things off with tip numero cinco, we have the powerhouse of the cell. Probably the single most useful ability in Acrid's entire kit is his special skill epidemic. This move fires off a deadly disease projectile, which upon contact with an enemy or the terrain splits into two and infects nearby enemies, spreading and repeating for up to 20 targets with your toxin of choice. This combined with the absolute cracked ability that is poison turns Acrid into the greatest eukaryotic powerhouse to grace the world since this bad Larry dropped onto the scene back in 1.45 billion BC. And although just spamming the aforementioned poison and run strat until they are 1 HP is not the most riveting of gameplay experiences, and honestly falls a little bit into the star belly sneech camp of tactics, the effectiveness of it is absolutely undeniable. Hell, it's arguably the single most effective strategy in the game, and as long as you are willing to endure some Disney World wait times, it doesn't matter who the ops are. Elite groups, scab troops, four player Mithrix on loop, Acrid in five, all day, baby. To really crank up this mitochondrial mayhem to the next level, make sure to keep on the lookout for the following items which drastically increase the effectiveness of Epidemic. First off, the Lysite Cell. This provides an extra charge of your special ability for every stack, giving you an extra chance for slinging some of that game over goo at any Petrichorian plebs who stand in Schmacko's way. Next up, the following items synergize particularly well with Epidemic's spreading capabilities, as every time the infection jumps to a new enemy, they have a chance to fire off and continue the chain onto more and more enemies, cascading into proc chain combos that will turn your screen into the slideshow simulator. The Sticky Bomb, ATG Missile, Ukulele, Will of the Wisp or Void Scent Flame, Sentient Meat Hook, Ceremonial Daggers, and Charged and Molten Perforators. By pairing these items together and then firing off even a single epidemic, you have the capability to delete the entire screen of even the most marathon looped runs that will have your endgame RTX 4090 PC build struggling to keep risk of rain from looking like possibility of PNG. Lastly, one of the best items on Poison Schmackos happens when he embraces his inner Viva la France revolution and picks up the old guillotine, which instantly executes elite enemies at 13% health or below, completely eliminating any need for you to wrap around and finish off those elite enemies that would have been left at 1 HP due to the poison. And now time for a little bonus. Welcome to Schmackrid's Item Emporium. What I'm going to do here is just rapid fire, go over some of the best items in each category, which synergize well with Acrid's moveset. Kicking things off with the white items, we got the good old focus crystal. You definitely want to make sure to pick up this rhombus because it increases the damage output for any attacks within a close range radius. Since a lot of Acrid's kit is smacking people around, you're going to want to pick this up and get that damage boost ASAP. Next up, we have the Gasolina, which on hit has a chance for creating a spreadable fire damage that synergizes particularly well with Epidemic. The Backup Mag is also a real solid pickup, whether you're rocking Ravenous Bite or in particular Neurotoxin, as it grants you an additional charge for your secondary skill for every stack you pick up. And finally, to round off the Blanco items, we have the Energy Drink and Paul's Goat Hoof. These increase your sprint speed and general movement speed respectively, and the Paul's Goat Hoof is in particular 
a absolutely huge pickup as it not only increases Schmackrid's movement speed just in general, but also the distance and speed at which he moves when using either Caustic or Frenzied Leap, allowing you to get absolutely nutty with these jumps. Moving on to the green items, one of the best ones you can pick up is the Shuriken, which not only grants Acrid another ranged attack, but also gives him a way to activate the bands from a distance. And speaking of the bands, these are fantastic whether you have the Shuriken or not, because Acrid can also reliably proc these with other moves in his kit, although not from a distance, so you do need to get up into that danger zone. And finally, we can't forget the old guillotine, which is a perfect combination with poison as it instantly executes any elite enemies at 13% health or below, completely negating the downside of poison, which is the fact that it cannot kill any enemies with tick damage. However, if Poison Schmackos rolls up onto the scene with the guillotine, these elite enemies better run for their lives because it's game over for them. Moving on to the void items, the Lysate Cell, which grants an additional charge of your special skill, so that just means more epidemic and more goo spraying activity. Continuing on with the theme of extra charges, the Hard Light Afterburner grants an additional two charges to the utility skill, so you will get an additional two jumps to your base two charges for either Caustic or Frenzied Leap, allowing you to pogo your way around the map and cause some massive mayhem. And to finish off with the red items, the Frost Relic and Unstable Tesla Coil, especially when paired with the Focus Crystal, are absolutely busted, as both of these items excel in creating a close range radius which either shocks or does this Frost Blizzard damage to enemies, and when combined with the bonus damage of the Focus Crystal, as well as the fact that a lot of Acrid's playstyle is getting up and in there into the thick of it it's just an all-around good time for the lizard king one more similar item that fits into this close range category is the yellow boss item the mired urn which is dropped by the clay dune strider this bad larry excels by tethering you to close by enemies dealing 100 percent damage per second applying the tar debuff and also stealing that enemy's health by giving them the big suck as for equipment items, the two main ones I'd recommend looking out for is the Primordial Cube, which creates a black hole sucking in enemies and concentrating them in one particular spot, which makes it a great synergy with the Epidemic, as all of those enemies are in a tight bound group and the disease can spread much more easily. And finally, the Royal Capacitor, arguably the best equipment item in the game, is a long range thunderbolt from the heavens i mean you're straight up dropping the power of zeus onto these jabronis heads and it does an insane amount of damage this damage combined with the fact that you can use it from true safety from all the way across the map means it is a great item to pick up for acrid especially if you don't have neurotoxin and are running the bite and blight build Lastly, if you weren't paying attention in tip numero five, go back and get your notepad out because if you pick up some of these bad boys, it's just the easiest, cheesiest way to deal with loop runs, bar none. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Let me know if I missed anything and any of your schmackrid tips down below. Thanks for tuning on in and we'll catch you next time. Adios, amigos.